One of the simplest things you can start doing right now to help you lose weight is to start breathing less. So many people have become what is called over breathers, where they start breathing way more than their body needs. So researchers actually looked at multiple studies and they found that about a hundred years ago, people's breathing volume was about half what our breathing volume is today. A hundred years ago, our breathing volume would be on average of five to six liters of air per minute. So people on average, when they were breathing in and out, that total volume of air that was being exchanged was only about five to six liters of air. Now people are breathing about 12 liters of air per minute. So that total amount of volume now has doubled. So why has that happened? Well, I could spend a whole hour or even longer talking about why this specific change has happened to our breathing but I'm gonna put a link in the description below where you can learn more about that. But essentially, after changes in industrialization and people eating a lot more fast foods and eating unhealthier, people have started becoming more unhealthy and they have started breathing a lot more and more. And specifically, people have started breathing more through their mouth as opposed to their nose. Now, when it comes to breathing less and how this can actually help you lose weight, we have some evidence on this. So since 1957, scientists have found that when animals move to living in higher altitudes, they start to tend to lose weight. And they also found that animals that permanently live in higher altitudes compared to animals that live at lower altitudes, those animals at the higher altitudes tend to be thinner compared to the animals at sea level. So because of this, there has been a ton of studies asking whether or not living at higher altitudes can help fight obesity. The problem is that we cannot all just move to areas that are high altitude. It's not practical for a lot of people just to pick up and move to areas that are high up in the mountains. But the good thing is we are able to do some sort of high altitude training or simulate living in a high altitude condition while sitting in our living room. So one guy who has studied this a ton is a guy named Patrick McKeown. And he actually developed something called the Oxygen Advantage, where he starts actually training people to start not only living on a shortage of oxygen, but also training athletes having a shorter amount of oxygen, because this will not only simulate them being at a higher altitude, it'll also make their body work a lot more efficiently. So the main thing with pretending to be at a higher altitude is learning how to breathe less than you currently are. So Patrick McKeown was able to train a bunch of people on how to start breathing less. And what he's found is some people are able to lose about two to six pounds within a span of two weeks by simply just changing their breathing. So one reason an increased amount of breathing is bad if you're trying to lose weight is the more that you breathe, the more likely you are to be stressed out and anxious. And we have a lot of studies that are documented that show that people who are more stressed out and anxious tend to eat more than people who are more relaxed. And the other thing about reducing your breathing is when you reduce your breathing, then your blood sugar levels actually drop. So for people who are diabetics or have high blood pressure, there's been reports that both of those things get improved when people learn how to survive with less oxygen. So why exactly does this reduced breathing simulate living at a higher altitude? Well, one thing that happens when you go to a higher altitude is the amount of oxygen in that atmosphere drops. So this is why if you've ever gone to Colorado or gone up in the mountains, why it's so much harder for you to breathe and you feel like you're out of breath because there's less oxygen around in that air. And this is also why athletes, when they're training for a big competition, they go to train in these higher altitudes so that they're used to this shortage of oxygen. And when they come back to normal sea level and to do their competition, they're at a higher advantage compared to other people. Well, you can take this same logic and do this in your everyday life by simply reducing the amount of air that you're breathing. So one simple way to start reducing the amount of air that you're breathing is to start using your nose to breathe instead of your mouth. So the very first step I always tell everybody is anytime you are at rest, and by rest I mean times where you are not exercising or times where you are not doing any sort of physical activity. So if you're sitting on your couch or if you're doing work on your laptop, that is what I consider to be at rest. At all those times, you want to only be using your nose to breathe. So that is step number one. If you cannot do that, then that's what you want to focus on. And I actually made other videos where you can actually improve your breathing through your nose. I know a lot of people say that my nose is super stuffy or I have these allergies and I can't breathe through my nose properly. I'm putting a link below where I talk about how to unblock your nose properly and how to start 
breathing through your nose more. And the other part of reducing your breathing is actually incorporating this into your exercises. So one way to do this is next time you're doing your cardio exercise or going for a run, try to only breathe through your nose. What you might find is you actually have to go a little bit slower at first to start making sure you can only breathe through your nose because you're gonna start feeling out of breath because your nose is not able to get in as much oxygen as your mouth. But what studies are showing is after two weeks of keeping this up, not only are you going to be able to be at your baseline level again, you're actually going to improve your performance compared to your baseline. Now, another aspect you can really start to incorporate to reduce your breathing is to start doing some sort of breath holds where you're holding your breath while going for walks or holding your breath for certain parts of your exercise because this is another way to deprive your body of oxygen and train your body to survive with less oxygen. Now I go into this more detail in another podcast where I kind of go over some specific exercises and how to do this more correctly. So I'm putting that link in the description below as well. So make sure you check that out if you want to learn more. But again, when it comes to breathing through your nose, there's so many other aspects of your life that it'll improve if you learn how to become a nose breather as opposed to being a regular mouth breather. And in those videos and those links below, I also talk about the benefits of nose breathing as well. So you can learn more about that too. If you want to get eight hours of sleep, you need to give yourself eight and a half hours to nine hours of actual sleep opportunity time. So give yourself more time to actually try to fall asleep and stay asleep because you know you're not going to be asleeping 100% of the time when you're in bed.